in, TV Pauls. How are y'all? <laughs> well, good. I'm glad y'all could make it today. So, got a few questions for you, okay? Mom, you can participate too, okay? All right. Have you guys noticed anything going on outside? Mm. Anything like the leaves? You notice those changing colors? How about all the apples? They're ripe, aren't they? They are. Yeah, the trees are giving their fruit. And has it gotten a little colder outside too? We hope, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, well, how about this? Have you noticed anything about your sister? Has she changed a little bit? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> well, she's walking, right? Mm -hmm. She's gotten bigger. Her hair is growing. Have you noticed anything about yourself? Have you gotten taller? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotten stronger? Moving all those apples? Helping your dad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know your mom's noticed a lot of changes too, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. People change, don't they? Yeah. People do. They grow up. They get taller. They get smarter, faster, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, so what we're trying, what I'm trying to talk about, though, is that things change, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing that stays the same, mm -hmm. even if it may seem like it stays the same. It may seem forever for those trees to make apples, right, all throughout the year. But guess mm -hmm. what? They do, and then there's no more apples on the tree, right? Because they're all picked. Yeah, and we had a festival yesterday, didn't we? Talk, show and case and all the good apples and all the good seasonal changes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, can anyone, does anyone want to try to take a guess at what doesn't change? Mm -hmm. If all these other things change, like trees and animals and people and even buildings, right? They change. Things that don't seem like they would, they always change. What doesn't change? Mm hmm. hmm. Give you a hint. God doesn't change, right? <laughs> well, God doesn't change. Let's go ahead and read 1 Peter 24 and 25 together, okay? Let's see. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the, follow, as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Did you get that? So it's saying that the grass and the flowers, they all fade, right, with the season changing? They do. And so it's saying here that the flesh, that means us, our bodies, they change. <laughs> they change, right? They fade away. And it also is talking about the glory of man. You want to take a guess at what that means? The glory of man. It's all that we build up in our lives here. It's buildings, it's legacies, it's money, it's mm -hmm. fancy cars, stuff like that. All that glory that we get up for ourselves, it's going to fade away too. It's going to rust, it's going to be forgotten, all sorts of things. But this doesn't sound really hopeful for us, does it? No. <laughs> I mean, it's all going to go away, isn't it? But because of Jesus and his sacrifice, this is where the good news comes in. This is where we know through God's word that God never changes. And so in his word, we read about the gospel. And we know that Jesus, he, was, he is God. He was born, he died, and he rose again for our sins. And so our debt has been paid, and we need to believe in him and that he did that for us. And we read all of that in this word, and we know that it is true. So, one more question. We know that it is true, right? That means we need to follow it, we need to believe it, okay? So what happens if somebody tells us something that isn't in God's word? What if we get told that we should go steal something? It's wrong, right? Yeah. If it goes against what we know that God has said in his word here, 
we know that it's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because we as believers believe in this word. We know that it is true. So we need to keep reading. We've been talking about the Bible, right? Every time I've been up here recently, we've been talking about the Bible. We need to keep reading it, and we need to keep hiding His Word in our hearts and memorizing Scripture. Mm -hmm. So that way, whenever we are asked and we are tested, we actually know what God says and who God is through His Word. So talking about memorizing Scripture, have you been practicing our memory verse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Have you all been practicing our memory verse? <laughs> So let's say it together. 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. good to be here uh, again this morning with you all and um, if you would take take just a second and I want you to look at the uh, I got a heavy heart this morning if you would take just a second just look at the walls of your church if you would please and um, we were at Old Fort Friday um, and the church the sanctuary at one time looked a lot like this but about, at least where the lights are up the wall, there was a mud line in there. Um, and it was a two-story church, so they have fellowship hall and classrooms. Um, it's very similar to the construction here, but um, there was men in that church, and they had fans going. They were in there with chainsaws, sawing the pews up. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's all ruined. Um, and the community we were in there... Um, you know, the church uh, is right in the middle, so there's houses all around, and straight across the road, there's uh, houses off their foundations, and uh, big orange X is painted on them, and, and cars uh, that don't resemble a car anymore, but uh, those people are, uh, are, they've banded together, and they're working so hard in their community, and, and they need lots of things. Um, one of the things I've found out, and, and, and Ronald already said, uh, they need a, a lot of things, and, and Hope Ministries is a good way to, to get it out, but uh, they are bombarded right now, I know, with water and all kind of non-perishable food, um, but it's supposed to be in the low 40s up there for the next several mornings, so 
uh, coats. You know, it, it won't be long. Winter's just around the corner, and and uh, I dare say it'll be a long past winter before they have a lot of them has water or sewer or anything they need. So if you will, just keep that in mind as you give. Uh, it is uh, it's life changing to see that, and so we're we're so blessed to live where we live and to not have any more damage than we have. So I want you to thank God for that. But Amen. I tell you, uh, I don't know about you all, but uh, I need your prayers every single day. Uh, that's what uh, you know. I'm so thankful. Centuries ago, the veil was torn in the temple, and when that veil was torn, we can talk to God from anywhere in the world. I'm just so thankful for that. I bet if uh, there's a way we could keep a record uh, west of here, the prayers hadn't stopped, hadn't stopped going up to heaven. You know what I believe? I believe it takes a terrible tragedy, a terrible tragedy to wake people up, to realize how bad they need God, and, and to realize how bad we need one another. That's what I believe. Um, if you brought your Bibles this morning, turn with me in the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to start about verse 9 and we'll see where God takes us today. But 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, uh, around verse 9. When you found your place, say amen. 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 Y'all are fast this morning. Fast. But we'll start reading at verse 9 again, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And, uh, and here we, we see Paul and he's talking. Can I tell you something this morning that I love, Paul? Um, one of the churches, uh, the church we were pastoring for so long, uh, one of the deacons up there gave me a little statue of Paul. Uh, it's uh, downstairs, but anyway, it's uh, the neatest thing. But as much as I love Paul, Paul was all about the Lord. Paul cannot save any of us. But he can sure, he sure led a bunch of people to the Lord, didn't he? And that's what it's about. It's about a man named Jesus. But look at verse 9 with me. It says, let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time, shall we? One more time. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, again for the, the day that you give us, Lord. And Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the heavy hearts that we have this morning, Lord, for our friends and neighbors, Lord, that as, uh, Lord, you know, they've suffered so much loss, Father God, I just... Lord, I, I don't know, Lord, we ask that you'd show us, Father God, what we need to do, Lord, to help these folks, Lord. And, and Lord, I know they need prayers more than anything, Father God, but as, as time moves on, Lord, and, and people goes back to their normal life, their normal routine, Lord, I want us to remember that those people up in them mountains, Lord, they're still struggling. Father God, so I'd ask that you would, you would help us, Lord. Help us to remember, Lord. Give us a reminder, Father God, so the help can, can keep going, Father God, for as long as those people need it. Lord, we want to say this morning that we love you, Lord, and we ask that you'd show us something here in your writing this morning, Father God. We, just, we love you, Lord. We're so thankful for Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. But if you look in verse 9, Paul is talking and it says, For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. And so it, let's look at this just for a minute. It says, For we are laborers together with God. How many of us labor through the day to make a, to make a living, to, to buy food and, and keep the lights on and pay for cars and houses? We A lot of us, some of us may be retired here today. I'm not one, but, but we labor for a lot of things, don't we? But have you ever just just decided, uh, uh, took a stand and said, well, let's just do something uh, for God today. Let's do something for God. Let's don't, uh, let's don't put money in the equation. Let's do something for, for the glory of God. I, here's what I wonder. I wonder if you took the nation we live in today, if you took that nation and said, here's what I want everybody to do. I want you to take Wednesday... Uh, don't take any pay for Wednesday, but I, I don't want you to go to your job. I want you to take off Wednesday and go do something for God. I wonder how many people would do it. Uh, you wonder how many. Folks, if we can't give God glory, who are we trying to, to glorify? I don't know of a man down here on this earth today that can get you to heaven. There was one, and we crucified him for that, didn't we? We crucified. Do you ever wonder uh, when they were when they had Jesus on trial and, and Pilate was uh, trying to decide over it and Barabbas was standing there? Do you ever wonder if you'd live back in those times exactly where in that crowd you would have been, what you'd have been saying? 
Would we have set a, a criminal free, do you think? Or would we have crucified an innocent man? Here's what I believe. I believe that we'd have jumped right on that bandwagon and we'd have let Barabbas go free and we'd have crucified the Lord. Here's, that's, that's what I believe. Why? Because the flesh is weak and the flesh is wicked and we can be misled. If you don't believe you can be misled, turn the, the news on when you get home today. Can I tell you something? And folks, my heart's hurting this morning. We got off on Parker Paget exit last Friday and exited off, went across the interstate and pulled in the Stuckey's parking lot. And you see all these people behind these buildings in suits. And, and folks, this is just my heart. This is what God's giving me right now. This is just my heart. But we see all these people behind that building. We see all these blue lights and all these people in all these, these suits. And I said, well, I said, well, what's going on back there? What are they doing? You know, there's a creek, or I guess it was a river back there. And they said, oh, said, uh, they're getting bodies out. They're getting bodies out. So listen, don't you believe uh, the body count that the news tells you because they are they're trying their best to sugarcoat it. There are uh, many, many people missing, many, many people searching for loved ones that they ne may never find again, I can assure you that some of those folks have gone on to heaven. But what about the folks that floated down that creek that didn't know the Lord? You see, those are the ones that, you know, their families are at a loss. Here's what I know for Christians. One of these days I'm going to see my grandparents. One of these days I'm going to see my dad. I know he's in heaven. But what about our family members that we don't know that knows God? What about our family members that never called on the name of Jesus and were saved? You see, they're the ones we have time now. We have time now to go to them people and witness to them and tell them about a man named Jesus before the flood comes here. We have time to do that. You have time to do that today. We all know somebody that's lost. Somebody that don't know the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says that we are fellow laborers with Christ. And what did Jesus come here to do, folks? Why did he, what was His sole purpose to come here on this earth? He came here to seek the people that were lost. He came here, my Bible says that He came here so that none should perish. None. What does none mean? That means zero. God don't want to see anybody in a place called hell. But here's the, the, the short of that story. Hell's going to be full going to be full of people. Wouldn't you hate to know that somebody went to a place called hell because you never witnessed to them? You may be the closest resemblance to a man named Jesus that those people could ever see, ever see. It's something to think about. You know, we're pretty laid back up here. We got, we got lights on and we got air conditioning and we got uh, running water and we got working toilets, but an hour and 20 minutes up the road, it's not so. It looks like the world's already ended for most of those people. It really does. It looks like a, a bomb went off and then, and then the world tried to cover it up with muddy water. I tell you, we've got it made good right here where we are. And we need to start making better use of our time than we have. Don't put off something today for tomorrow. You've got time today. I suggest that you... You do it. I bet when those people, when they heard a storm coming, they didn't think anything about it because they said, well, why would we worry about this storm? We're way up on the mountain. It's not going to affect us. I can tell you, it will affect you. It will affect you. <coughs> but look, it says, we are fellow laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We, we, Say we. We. Y'all sound French every time you do that. We are God's... Why are y'all laughing? You do, Debbie. Uh, we are God's building. And why? Because just like I said, the, the veil in the temple was torn. And so where does the Holy Spirit of God live? We don't have to, we don't have to go to, to some tent or to some certain, certain place to worship God. Where does the Holy Spirit of God live today? Right here. Everybody... Everybody do like this. This is the directions. Do this. I, if you are saved, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of your heart. Inside of your heart. And we don't have to, and we don't have to jump through hoops or, or go to some special place or, or go to some crazy old preacher to, to talk to God. We can do that from anywhere in the world that we want to go to. What a blessing. What a blessing we have. What a blessing we have to, to know that we are God's building. 
And so what do we do with God's building? What do we do with it? I, most of us save it for ourselves. We do. Most of us save it for ourselves. And I tell you what, I, I love cars and trucks. I just, I can't help it. It's, it's in a man's DNA. Y'all think I'm joking, but I'm really not. And so uh, we went Friday to Old Ford, and, and to say there's a road in Old Ford would be just not true. But where we had to go, the black mud was piled up on the side of the streets where they tried to clear it off between shoulder high and waist high. It was a mess, and, but you had to drive back up in that old uh, black mud just to give people what they needed to survive what they needed to survive. Imagine, imagine. see, we were used to this, air condition, lights, you name it. We got everything we need. But when you go in the United States and you see something that resembles a third world country where a bomb's went off, you're not ready for that. You're really not. You're, you're thinking this is the United States and, and it still is, I believe, the greatest country in the world. There's no doubt. But what I believe is when, when you uh, see a part of the United States that looks like that, you just you start questioning things. How? Why? Where's all the help? Why are they not here? So the help is this. The help comes from God. And those people up in them mountains, hey, they have band together. Band together. I didn't know any of them. Here's what I know. It looked like they had the same clothes on they'd had on for several days. They were muddy from, from, from toe to shoulder. And, and when we pulled up, we were talking and laughing and unloading stuff. And why? Because the Spirit of God is all over that place. All over that place. Why is it, folks, that, that things have to get so bad before we rejoice over what God has, has given us down here on this earth. Why? Why do we have to see things destroyed? Uh, think about this just for a minute. When's the last time you've seen some of your family? When's the last time? I can tell you when. Because all families are the same. We don't want to admit it. All families are the same. The last time you've seen parts of your family was at a funeral home. Or a great... Yeah, everybody's shaking their head like it. That's right. Why does it take something so, so tragic for us to come together and be one. My Bible says that, look, it says that we, you know, the French part, y'all just said it, we are, we are God's building. We, and it has many members. Paul said it has many members. And it's us. We are God's building. Don't forget that. Look at verse 10 with me. It's, it says, so we are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Listen to this. It says, I have laid, Paul says, look, I have laid the foundation and another uh, buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. When Paul says foundation, I, I think about when Paul and Silas, you know, they wanted them to quit preaching the gospel. And, and you remember, if you look in the book of Acts, and you don't have to turn there, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they're going all over the places and they're, they're preaching the gospel. And so they, they catch them and they capture them. And, and the Bible says that they beat them with rods. Remember that? They beat them with rods and they, and they lock them up in prison. But, but up in the night, way up in the night, Paul and Silas, rather than, than feeling sorry for their self, they're sitting in that prison cell. And look, they are beat up and tore up and chained up, no doubt. But the, the Bible says that they're sitting in that prison cell singing hymns. Singing hymns. Now I say that to say this. Even on your worst day, you have a God in heaven that loves you. And the only thing you have to do on that worst day is say something to Him. Talk to Him like He is your Father. Because He is. And He loves you and He will give you joy that a thief and a liar cannot steal. I can assure you. They were, at their, they were beat up without anything and they knew that they were about to die. But the Bible says in Acts 16, it says that while they were in prison, they were singing hymns and it says there was an earthquake. The Bible says that there was an earthquake and it says it, it shook the foundations of the building. But I want you to remember what Paul and Silas, what their foundation was based on. It was based on the Lord Jesus. So it don't matter how bad an earthquake you have, how bad the flood is, as long as your foundation is built on the Lord Jesus, nothing can overtake you. Nothing can overtake you. Did you hear about that lady that lived with her, her, uh, her, her, I think her mom and her dad and had a seven-year-old boy? 
up there in that flood. Did you hear about all that? They, she, she lived with all of them and she lost all of them, even her seven-year-old boy. You know the last words she heard coming out of her seven-year-old boy's mouth? He was crying as the water swept him away. He was crying, help me Jesus, help me Jesus, help me Jesus. You see, that little boy knowing if I had a million dollars to place a bet, now don't bet, don't get me wrong, but if I had a million dollars to place a bet, I bet you that that little boy has seen Jesus before his head went under water. That's how good my God is. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. But I want you to think about this prison. It says that the earth quaked and the, and the uh, prison quaked and it, was sh- it shook the foundation of the prison and it says that the doors came open. All the doors came open to you. Are you getting with me? Are you following where I'm going this morning? You see, as long as you are based on Jesus, He is going to set you free from anything that keeps you feeling like you are locked up or bound by some old hateful sin. You know the only thing you have to do to get free from all that sin or, or that binding of that sin? You have to ask the Lord to take it from you. And my God's good. You know, He's so good. You know what He does if you ask Him to take something from you? He takes it. He takes it without question. Without question. But now my God don't want any hollow words. He don't want any hollow words. He wants it to come from right in here. And when it comes from the heart, when His heart felt, my God answers prayers. I can tell you, but I want you to think about Paul and Silas. You see, they were in there, but the doors opened and they didn't leave. And so back in these ancient times, I told the boys in the back we were going to be in 1 Corinthians. We might go back. I'm sorry. We might go back, but, but if you look in the book of Acts and you, and you think about what's going on, it says that the, the prison doors were opened. But Paul and Silas, nobody left. The prisoners didn't leave. But what happened was this. A prisoner came, uh, one of the guards, prison guards came running in because he knew, the Bible says he was ready to, to take care of himself. He knew if the prisoners got away that he was responsible for them, he was in for a bad day. A bad day. But the, but the prison guard come running in and, and he was all to pieces. And I'm paraphrasing. And Paul says, look, don't, don't worry, don't worry. He says, we're still here, we're still here. And then what happens? I don't know. Uh, well, he's got it up on the screen. But then what happens? The prison guard takes Paul and Silas, says he, he takes them to their house. Takes them to their house and, and he doctors all their wounds. Where they'd been beat, they'd been beat with rods. They'd been beat to death. He says he, 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 he puts on them and he takes care of their stripes. It's what he does. He takes care of their stripes. And so what happens then to the, to the guard? What happens to him? He, said, he looks at Paul and Silas and he says, He says, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And what does Paul say? He says this. He says, believe on the name of Jesus. Believe on the name of Jesus. That's what he says. He says, not only you, but as long as your whole family believes on the name of Jesus, you can all be saved. Folks, as long as we all believe in the name of Jesus, we can all be saved. Every one of us, every one of us can be saved as long as we what? As long as we believe on the name of Jesus. Now here's what Jesus can do for you. He can give you a... You remember when we had Lake Taco up here on 421? Everybody remembers that. and That's a curse I've had to carry for how many years, Debbie? Five years or something. And You know, we'd have hard rains in the water to get up and we'd have to go and they'd be mud in the road and so on and so forth and... I want to tell you, every few weeks, myself and one more man would have to walk in that Taco Bell building. And we would have to walk through there and see if there was cracks in the foundation, see if the floor had cracked, the doors were not opening right, so on and so forth. And at this point in time, the building was already closed, okay? They'd already closed up shop, but uh, the debate was at that point in time, was it going to be a teardown? You know, who knows? They didn't know at the time. So... At one point in time, and I know this is dangerous, but it is what it is, but we'd have to go in that building. We'd have to walk around the edge of the building and get in the building and walk around in the building and look at the floor. Folks, I can tell you, the ground, the ground was falling down around that building, but the foundation of that building was so thick. And when I say so thick, it was amazing. 
Everything that went on, the foundation never cracked. Never, ever cracked. Not even up until the time the track hoe bucket tore it out. It never cracked. The whole time the building was standing, it never cracked. Even though the world had, had washed away around it, the, the foundation had never cracked. And so what can Jesus do for you when your world, folks... I never thought I'd use Taco Bell in a sermon, but <laughs> listen, when, when your world is, is falling down and getting washed away from around you, if you are founded in Jesus, your foundation is safe. Let me tell you something, we will be shaken at times in our life. I promise you, we will be shaken, no doubt, but we will not lose that foundation as long as it is Jesus Christ, folks. You can be told a lot of lies and be made to believe a lot of things, but you put your trust in the Lord Jesus, and He will save you in more ways than you know. Not only will He give you salvation, and the, and the key to heaven lives inside of your heart today. I hope everyone here. But how can He save you when the media... I don't even want to go there, but we hear a lot of stuff that's not true, folks. Let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus is the master teacher that lives inside of you. You can discern what you hear. There's not a doubt in my mind. You can discern what's so and what's not. When I stand here before you today and say there's a lot of people up on the mountain that needs a lot of help, there is. There's a lot of people right here in this community that need just as much help. You see, they need spiritual and and, and physical. But there's a lot of people here in your community, it might be your neighbor that needs spiritual help. They may have the world falling in around them, but if their foundation is not as, as solid as yours, if it's not in the Lord Jesus, where's their hope? What do they base their hope upon? I can assure you their foundation is, is ready to be damaged, if not already. But here's the thing about the Lord Jesus. There's nothing that He can't rebuild. Nothing. Nothing that He can't rebuild. I know a lot of lives. I talked to one of my, I think one of my best friends, his family lives in Old Ford and he's been up there all week and he, he came home yesterday and I texted him this morning. You know how we do, I texted him and I said, are you back? And so before I thought the text even went through, my phone rang and he said, I'm back, bud. And he started crying. You see, he's back. But all of his family, that's where they live and he lives here. All of his family's still up there. He said, but I had to come back and go to work. And we understand that we have to work. I'm telling you what, if his uh, uh, faith wasn't founded on, on Jesus, where would he be? How many of you have ever seen hard times or bad times in your life? I tell you what you do when you, when you see that time, when you, when you see a hard time or a bad time, even though you know you're in the middle of it, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look past it. I want you to know that it will not last forever. It will not last forever because my Bible tells me that what does Jesus do every morning? He, he, he makes all mercies new. Jesus starts us a brand new every morning. Nothing is forever except salvation. One of these days, if, if the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of each one of us, and I hope that He is, we're going to a place one of these days where there won't be any more floods, any more storms, any more graveyards, no more need for, for doctors. I hope that your foundation is on Jesus today. I hope, I hope that it is. I hope that it is. Bye.